that's a lot. Just have to make it a day. First name N I C H O L A S, last name K I B L E R. Thank you. And uh, you, you are a Waukesha County Sheriff's deputy. I am. And have you been assigned to work this case? I have. And were you present in courtroom uh, 20 this morning with Mr. Brooks when he was removed from this courtroom to that courtroom? I was. And. Did you make any personal observations regarding the audio and visual um, setup that we have over there? Both the audio and visual were working properly. The audio was a lot louder than it has been in the past while we were in that room. <clears throat> did you have any difficulty hearing the court? I did not. And then, of course, you could see through the uh, cameras from this courtroom into the neighboring courtroom. I could. All right, that's the only record I wanted to make. State, have any questions? Uh, just briefly, um, Deputy Kibler, the defendant asks many asked many times if he was muted or unmuted. Do you remember that? Yes. Can you confirm that even on the occasions when his microphone was muted, the audio in the courtroom continued to work? It was. And at any time while Mr. Brooks was muted, or even if you didn't know, at any time did Mr. Brooks asked to be brought back over to this courtroom, sir. He did not. He is telling us he prefers right now to be in that courtroom. He did not want to come back in here. All right, thank you. Those are all my questions, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, you are unmuted. Do you have any questions for this deputy? All right, thank you. You may step down. All right, then I'm going to have Zach Tremaine also take the witness stand. Do you <coughs> Can you do a um, project it, please? I think I can, can I just share it? Is that if I share the clerk screen? Yes. All right. Um, there is, first of all, sir, stand and raise your right hand. <laughs> um, do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All right, thank you. Be seated. State your first and last name for the record, please. Zachary Trebane. Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y, Tremaine is T-R-E-M-A-I-N-E. -E. All right, and uh, what is your position with the uh, Clerk of Courts office here in Waukesha? I'm the IT coordinator for the Waukesha County Circuit Courts. Were you in courtroom 20 this morning following Mr. Brooks being uh, taken to that courtroom? Only temporarily. I was there when the call started, and then we came back to do a measurement of a DV meter later. There's a document or a photograph that's displayed on the monitors throughout this courtroom. Can you tell me what we're looking at? So my phone is in the photo um, overlaid on top of what we call the X panel. It is our AV control panel. So you push buttons on it and actions happen into the courtroom, AV related. Um, at that time of the photo, my phone is registering 67.3 decibels in that courtroom. And that was when the judge or the court was talking and then the sound is coming over the speakers in the other courtroom. And what, if anything, based on your training and experience, can you tell me 67 decibels means? It's plenty loud. Um, for comparison, I did a quick reading in the media pooling room, which is CG6 in our courthouse. Um, the meter there was reading between 55 and 65, so it's louder than the audio feed going to the media right now. All right, thank you. Any question um, from the state? Sir, I'm uh, looking at the photo, and Your Honor, for the record, this photo will be made a court exhibit? Yes. Okay. I'm looking at your phone screen, and it looks like in the upper right-hand corner, you. it appears the time is either 926 or 936 a.m. On my phone, yes. I believe our AV processor, which is the other time of 923, I believe that just needs to be updated. But okay. It is approximately 926 when the photo was taken. Okay. Those are my questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Wait, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Do you know, happen to know what the decibels are in this room? I don't. I'd have to pull the same thing up on my phone while people are talking. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brooks, any questions for this witness? Yeah, for the record, I don't consent to be in court that name. Uh, 
do you know anything about the the hearing when someone has the hearing loss in, in, in any of their ears? I do not. So it would be fair to say you don't know if I can hear everything good from this courtroom? I can tell you what the readout of the room is. Beyond that, I don't know. Well, I can't I can see what the uh, photo that everybody else is in there seeing that was supposedly supposed to be made in the exhibit. I have not viewed that, so I don't know what's being referred to when you refer to the picture. I'll, I'll have to that show you that in a different way. I don't have the zoom up and running, which would have been the mechanism to allow for an exhibit to be displayed, I can start that and have that up momentarily. Fair enough. So give me a moment. For the moment, we'll print it in black and white so you have it until I can get the zoom up. You are in the meeting now. I need to get the other courtroom in, so just one moment. I have to stop the polycom, Zach. Yep, you have to hang up and then join it to the Zoom meeting. Okay, hold on, please. Can you do that? Stop the call from polycom to polycom, and then I'm going to call it in through the Zoom so I can share the screen with the exhibit, which will actually help when we do jury instructions. Copy that. systems are out, so hold on. One more. You are in the meeting now. All right, so the record should reflect that um, I've now changed the audio visual from the polycom unit to the use of Zoom. Um, I've called in both courtrooms and they can hear from over there and then I'll do, um, I just need to get back on so I can get the email. Give me a second, I have to go from double screen to single screen. <laughs> Uh, the way I sign in, but that'll take me just a second, and then I'll share screen so the color exhibit can be viewed by the defendant. the court is sharing screen uh, and the image is being displayed. Yeah, I see it. 
You see it? Okay, thank you. Any questions regarding that then, sir? My question was, pretty much already answered. You don't know if me, myself, can hear everything you hear in the right courtroom, correct? I do not, correct. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll stop sharing. Okay, thank you, Zach. You can step down. All right, I just wanted to put that on the record since um, that was an issue raised by Mr. Brooks previously. Now, I need to get a copy of the jury instructions. They were quite lengthy. I, the record should reflect that Mr. Brooks was provided with a written copy. It's 107 pages, and the state was provided with a written copy as well. Again, it's all the same, 107 pages, and then my written copy is on its way. I accept the value and return the value document. That's if I'm not muted. You're not muted. I also would like to again ask the subject matter jurisdiction to be proven on the record. Your request is denied. It has yet to be verified. It has yet to be verified. Your request is noted. Your it's denied. Without further hearing Your or consideration. Honor. I was just told that um, the evidentiary phase is supposed to be closed off when I haven't been able to present my evidence into the record as I've asked numerous times on the record to be able to do. I, I said I have numerous documents that needed to go into the record. Why have they not been permitted to be made evidence? I didn't, I didn't uh, rest my case, so I don't know why that's being told. And I haven't, I have yet to be able to offer my exhibits into the record for evidence. How, how is that so, Your Honor? So the court did declare the evidentiary phase of this trial closed. I specifically found that you forfeited your right to present any further evidence or testimony. Uh, when you failed to answer my questions regarding the calling of witnesses. And then I also declared that you forfeited your right to testify. Specifically as it relates to your trial filing, sir, I would note that all uh, evidence in a trial must be proper, it must be probative, it must be relevant, and it must follow all rules of procedure and all rules of evidence. Uh, to the extent that you wrote all of those documents, sir, that would be hearsay. And for that reason, I'm denying your request to make them part of the record. They, they, were, not, they were not here to say, Your Honor, I did what you told me to do. You told me, since I was representing myself pro per, that I had to write everything out and present them to the court. So that's not what I said. You're misquoting me, but in any event, I'm no, denying your you request. Said. Um, I said, so, you're saying that I have, so you're saying that I have no right to present evidence and to have exhibits as the state's been able to do. Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to have a debate about this are you now. Denying, I have are you, I got are a you mute denying me once again. Right? So Mr. Brooks, I have muted you because um, I declared the evidentiary phase of this trial closed. You forfeited your right to present further evidence and testimony previously by refusing to answer the court's questions. I will specifically address the filings. Number one, it is not true that I advised him that any filing would become evidence. That is simply false. Number two, filings, I told him if he wanted to present motions, should be written down and should be, should be based in law and fact and request specific relief. I'm well aware that previously he has referenced he would like his filings made exhibits. I've reviewed those filings. There's nothing relevant, nothing probative, or the information contained therein is hearsay. Um, Mr. Brooks would have needed to testify regarding any statements that he 
from himself, testimony. He cannot simply put in an affidavit. That's not proper. That's hearsay. And he hasn't asked in any of those filings that he hasn't put forth any exception to the hearsay rule that would allow this court to admit his written filings. I believe, without fail, they are all irrelevant, not probative, and hearsay, and therefore not admissible. So we're moving on to the discussion of jury instructions. When Mr. Brooks wants to abide by the rules of decorum and civility, I will unmute him. He clearly just took the entire packet of jury instructions and put them, I don't know what's under the table, if it's a garbage can or if he just simply put them under the table, but they are no longer in front of him. I will, however, unmute him so that we can get his feedback regarding jury instructions. It's typically a back and forth. We'll go through them, and I'll ask the parties whether there are any instructions they believe should be included, and we'll have a discussion on that, and then we'll talk about whether any of the instructions that are in here need to be modified in any way, taken out, edited, et cetera. Beauty. You're unmuted now, but as long as, but you have to not interrupt. You can't, you can't, I'm not trying to interrupt, but how can you deny me the chance to put on an adequate defense by saying nothing that you told me to do can be presented into evidence? So you filed them, you filed everything that I gave to you, you filed. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to mute you because this is not relevant at this time. It is. He's raised tone of voice, he's very animated, he threw the jury instructions on the floor. I understand you're upset, sir. I understand you believe I'm violating your right to present a defense. I've made my rulings. I determine you forfeited your right to testify, which includes the right to present evidence as you would have testified. I closed your, and I closed off your ability to call any other witnesses by finding that you forfeited your right to do so based upon your conduct. I understand you're frustrated. I understand you believe that I'm not without authority to do that. I made specific factual findings. I've referenced the law, and you being upset with the decision is not going to change my mind. He's also taken the headphones off. It's his choice right now whether he participates in this jury instruction conference. It is his choice. But if he is going to spout off about things that I've already determined, I will continue to exercise the mute function on the audio equipment. I'll unmute him again, but you are advised, sir, you need to be proper. You need to not interrupt, and you need to stay on task, which is we're discussing jury instructions, not other evidence, not subject matter jurisdiction, not your belief that I told you to file things a certain way. We are now discussing jury instructions. So once again, I'll unmute him to see if he can follow these simple rules. You need to tell me why I can't present evidence. How can you deny me the fact, how can you deny me my right to present evidence? All right, I'll unmute him once again because he wants to continue. And again, I understand he's upset. I understand that. But he has himself to blame for his conduct this morning and the rulings that I've made. All right, so let's go through these jury instructions. First of all, has the state received a copy of the draft? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Brooks, do you acknowledge receipt? I believe you did by acknowledging it previously, but do you acknowledge receipt of the draft of the final jury instructions? I don't acknowledge nothing, and I don't acknowledge anything now. I have not received anything. I would ask the bailiff to pick up the documents from the floor and put them in front of him. I'm not presenting it to nothing I don't give my consent to. You can't deny me the right to put on a defense. How can you tell me when I just say it three or four times? I'm going to read it once again because, again, I understand he's upset. If the bailiff could confirm, well, he put them on top, he put them on the floor, that's his right. They're not in front of him, but it's by his own conduct that he's done that. 
The record should reflect Mr. Brooks is muted because he wants to continue to debate with this court about my prior rulings regarding his forfeiture by conduct of his right to present further evidence on his behalf. I know one of the things I probably need to look at, I'm not sure if Madam Clerk did this or not, would be the language from the amendment from the amended information on count 76. The 76 count. It says near Frame Park, so it is in there, but that was just one question I had. All right. So, State, do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Your Honor, I'm just going through each one. I'm on page 50 of 107. Everything is looking great so far. Okay. Fair enough. There's 107 pages. I certainly can give the parties some time to continue to read through them. Mr. Brooks is requesting to go back to his cell at this point. I'm going to deny that request. He can remain in the other courtroom. I know he's muted, but I can certainly hear him from this side. He appears to be yelling at the top of his lungs. I can't decipher what he's yelling. I'll advise Mr. Brooks without a specific waiver of his right to be present, even if it's from the remote courtroom, he's going to remain in that courtroom. And that would require him to have a colloquy with me.
Mr. Brooks, I know you are still muted by me, but I know the audio is working, but I would ask you to specifically advise if there are any specific jury instructions that you are asking be read to the jury. Mr. Brooks, if you have specific instructions or categories of instructions that you believe this court should consider, I need you to write them down on a piece of paper. If you don't have, I believe I see a writing utensil. I'm not sure if I see a pad of paper. We'll make sure you have that. But given your current demeanor, um, which is still seems quite animated in a loud raised voice, I'd ask that you write it down. How's the state doing on its review? Okay.
I just want to make a continuing record that Mr. Brooks is still, I can still hear him even though he's muted due to his level, his tone of voice and volume level that he is using from the neighboring courtroom. So all of these should be included. They weren't, but they just put them in numerical order. So you definitely haven't taken out any numbers. Mr. Brooks, I'll advise you once again if there are any specific requests for either instructions or categories instructions that you want this court to consider, please write a note to pass to the bailiffs who can let me know.
I know I've, upon my review, I noted a, a few spots that uh, either in the headings that some information or words that might need to be removed. Um, but let me, why don't you go through and tell me what requests you have starting, and then we'll go page by page okay. and just tell me what page number and what section. So I think the first concern I have is with regards to the bail jumping. I know that we had charged, there's two separate felony cases the defendant was out on bail. And I do believe it would be assistive to the jury to have the specific case number. So when we first talking about um, 61 of 107, we start talking about the bail jumping. And then we go specifically on page 63 of 107. And when we could talk about count 74 and 75, I think it might be helpful to put the, the Milwaukee case number because they are different case numbers so that they know exactly what they're finding that he was out on bail and that as conditions of his release. And those bail bonds were entered into evidence. Let me look at the... information and then just because I think this was just a, a uh, well I, I guess I'll have you um, when we look at the verdict forms on page 102 to 107 for the bail jumpings there's uh, verdicts for the bail jumpings for three separate counts 74 75 76 I don't think there should there should not be one for 76 I believe that should be the battery that would be true My computer's just acting up a bit, so I'm going to search. I'm going to see what the information says. And then I'll ask Mr. Brooks if he has a position on that. Sometimes it's easy if we just list out, I guess, what the changes are requested. I'm going sure. to make some notes, and then we'll go through sure. them one by one. But so and I don't believe it was at, um, spelled out in the amended information. Say that again? I don't believe it was spelled out in the amended information. Right. I'm so that would be page 63 of 107, whether or not we want to put the specific case numbers. I can tell you right now, I typically like to follow the information, so I'm pro probably not inclined to do that, and we can argue that, though, to the jury. But okay. let's go through the list, and then we'll get okay. uh, the defendant's responses if he okay. would like to give us those. But we'll go through the whole list. So that's then, the bail jumping. Yep, and then... Um, with the verdict forms with regards to the bail jumping, um, just to put on the record, page 102 of 107, I believe there's a count 76, which details it as a bail jumping. I believe that should be the battery. I did notice on... The motive instruction was incorporated um, on page 5 of 107. And I know that intent is, is an element of the battery. I don't believe that was incorporated. I mean, usually it's a standalone instruction. I, I think the court incorporated it with the first degree intentional homicide because certainly that was 
I think that's part of the pattern instruction. Oh, it is. Okay, then we'd ask for motive. I think that there's a 175 instruction that could be given as a standalone. I'll look at that. Okay, we'll add that. And then on page 65 of 107, which is the 70, the preliminary instruction, defendant proceeding pro se, um, there's the standard paragraph, which is the first paragraph listed under this instruction, and then there's um, an additional paragraph. Um, we are going to object to that additional paragraph. I think it highlights the defendant's bad behavior. Um, so I'd ask that that be taken out. <coughs> Okay, with regard to page 106 of 107, um, I believe that those were add-ons at the end that the court wanted to question the parties about. Yes. I believe that there was 325 should be given. Um, one of the witnesses for the state did testify he did have one prior conviction. I believe a witness for the defendant testified that he had a number of convictions. Um, with regard to that same page, 106 of 107, instruction 141, where identification of defendant is an issue. Um, I, I don't know if it is an issue. Um, that wasn't raised during the defendant's closing arguments. Um, I mean, sorry, his opening arguments. I would know that, uh, or note that um, the defendant would sometimes cross-examine people on if they were able to see the person driving or the description of the person driving, and he would cross-examine them as to their ability to perceive that. So I guess that would really be up to the defendant if he wishes that to be given. Um, on page 107 of 107, instruction 172, um, circumstantial evidence, flight, escape, concealment, the state that was included in the initial uh, instruction that we requested, and I would continue to request that instruction be included. It's really just flight, though. Correct. What's that number again? 172. Yeah, I know. It's just not there. I saw it. It's fine. But only as to flight. I made a correction on it. I just going to find it. All right. So and I would say concealment to some extent, because he took off some clothes that would have identified him. But again, his running away, his trying to conceal his identity by removing some clothing that would have been, was identified by many num numerous witnesses as him wearing a hoodie or a light colored um, top. Those are all, and do you have any requests as it relates to instructions that are not in the packet that should be? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right, let me turn to Mr. Brooks just to get whether he has any, his list. Um, I'm not asking for a response yet, Mr. Brooks. I'm, what I'm asking you for is whether you have any requests for jury instructions, or if in your review you think anything needs to be changed, deleted, <coughs> added, etc. I know I'd ask that it be put in writing, but I'll also give you this opportunity to verbally advise the court and make your request. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir? I would note he put two boxes right in front of where he's seated, so I can't presently see his face, I see his jacket is off because I can see the outline of his arms and I can see the jacket on the back of his chair. Um, he is unmuted. I've confirmed previously regarding the audio working and I will just ask him a second time, sir, do you have any requests as relates to the draft 
packet of jury instructions, whether that be any additions, corrections, edits, or deletions. And, Your Honor, would it be possible for the bailiffs to just move the boxes off the table so we can see? Yes, I think that's fair. I'm going to advise the bailiff to remove the box so I can see Mr. Brooks. I don't know what he's doing behind there. He has quieted down. I haven't heard him in a while. If you could move the second one because it can interfere with the microphone as well. And the third. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to ask you for a third time. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Any requests for instructions that aren't included that you believe should be included? Any edits or deletions from the packet that has been provided to you? Because I couldn't see you, sir. I've asked you twice now, and I'll ask you a third time. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Any additions, deletions, edits, or otherwise? Hey, man, you don't got to talk to me like that. Do you have any requests? First of all, first of all. Related to the jury instructions, sir. Yeah, I got requests. It ain't like they're going to be honored, though. As it relates to the jury instructions, sir, what are you requesting? I heard what the hell you said, man. Well, Mr. Brooks, that was very disrespectful. Yeah, and I've been getting disrespected since the beginning of this whole process. So welcome to the club. Mr. Brooks, do you have any requests? I'm tired of my wife being trapped around here, too. I'm tired of it, too. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Can nobody understand why I'm frustrated? How you going to sit up here and make decisions based on what you think I said when I didn't get consent for you to do any such thing? I understand you may be upset, and I really do, but I've made my determinations. You don't understand nothing. You don't understand anything, Your Honor. You don't. I'm going to mute him again because he's not answering the questions that I'm very clearly asking him, and I've given him five opportunities. Mr. Brooks, do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? I'll unmute you for that answer. I can't hear anything you're saying. I can't hear anything you're saying. Mr. Brooks, I know the audio is turned up. I believe you can hear me. You've chosen not to put the headphones on. That's your choice. My final question to you, do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? I just told you, am I muted? Am I muted? No. I just told you, I don't know how many times, I can't hear everything you're saying. Then you should put the headphones on. What about that, don't you understand? What about that, don't you understand? If you see headphones, you can see everything. You can see boxes, but then you see headphones. Have you asked for headphones to be provided, sir? I should have to ask for them. I didn't ask for my boxes to be moved. I believe they took them away previously because you were so agitated. They were perhaps afraid you might break them. Yeah, I'm still agitated. I ain't going to stop being agitated. That ain't going to stop. You sit up here and do everything you're doing and think you're going to, and think God don't see what you're doing? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Mr. Brooks, do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? I can hear what you're saying. I can hear what you're saying. You just told me you didn't. So which one is it? Yeah, I got the headphones on. Can you see that? What are your requests as it relates? What are your requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir? Man, don't try to come with this whole little image of sir. Now it's all this sir and all this. I'm going to get where I'm going. Sir, I can't hear anything you're saying. 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 I
Mr. Brooks, you're being disrespectful again. You've been, you been being disrespectful. You've been being disrespectful. I need to know what your position is regarding the jury instructions. And I need to know it now. What do you mean? Who are you, who are you, who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. I need to know whether you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir. Yeah, first of all, first of all, first of all, why am I charged with two bail jumpers when I was already charged in Milwaukee for the same bail jumping? That's double jeopardy. That's not double jeopardy. Your objection is it noted. Is it's overruled. It, it, is, it is double jeopardy. How are you going to charge me with the same charge that I'm already charged with? You can't do that. The Fifth Amendment says, the Fifth Amendment says that you can't play somebody in jeopardy of life and limb. Twice. I'm already charged with the same count in Milwaukee this, for the same case. It's the same bail jumping charge. So how am I charged with that here? Sir, I'm not going to provide a legal explanation other than to say I've reviewed that. Your objection is noted, um, but but the jury will be instructed regarding the bail jumping. It can't be because that's double jeopardy. Under the law, if, if, two, if two charges are identical in nature, you cannot, you cannot place me in jeopardy of life and limb twice. You can't do that. The what's your next case, the same case number what's your what's your request next request sir i'm noting your objection I'm, 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 trying, I'm trying to talk can i get it out you always want me to not interrupt you but you always find a way to talk over me i understand your position you i'm saying it's overruled you always want respect you always want respect but don't want to get it I'm charged with the same bail jumping charge here that I've already been charged with. That is double jeopardy. You can't charge me for the same exact bail jumping that I'm already charged with, that I was charged with before I even before this even came about. Sir, the bail jumping charges in Waukesha County are based upon your violating your bail while in Waukesha County by driving through the Christmas parade and allegedly killing six people and injuring 61 others. Okay. Th that's the and distinction. Again, again there, there's, there is no distinction. It's the same charge. It's the same it's offense. It doesn't mean it's the same it's factual it's basis, it's sir. He is not it charged is. with bail jumping with the data violation of November 21, 21 in Milwaukee County anywhere. Further, the double jeopardy prohibition would prevent him from being convicted twice, not charged twice. All right, so we've addressed that, sir. What's What other requests do you have as it relates to the jury instructions? Uh, I, I want to I know why I'm even charged twice with the same thing. You can't charge me in pursuant to a, a, a case in Milwaukee that I'm already charged with bail jumping for. I'm already charged with bail jumping for that already. So you can't you can't essentially say, oh, well, because you are already on bail, we're gonna charge you. It's a different date of violation, sir. The conduct yeah, for the bail jumping you know, is related to the I'm allegation that you committed a new crime in Waukesha County while out on bond from the Milwaukee County case. Yeah, but I'm referring to the first bail jumping count. The first I'm not referring to both of them, I'm referring to one of them. My understanding, sir, is there's different dates of violations as it relates to that. So I've noted your objection now repeatedly. I understand it. Your request to, I guess, dismiss the bail jumping counts are denied. I didn't say nothing about counts. I said one. Whether it's one count or both, it's being, denied. Am I not being understood? You can't charge me with the same charge twice. You can't. It's two separate of. Uh, cases, sir. There's isn't two. Is it that nine? Is it that nine seventy one point two three? Is it that the statute that refers to the double? All right, sir. I'm not going to have an argument. This isn't fruitful. I, you're, I understand what you're saying. You're saying you, there shouldn't be two counts of bail jumping. You believe it's double it jeopardy. Be, I disagree with that. 
They're I'm separate. Already charged with it. I'm already charged with it, though. We're, this is a circular it. argument, it's sir. It doesn't change the fact that, from my perspective, the two bail jumping counts are going to proceed forward. There's been sufficient evidence presented to warrant they the can. jury being instructed. They what they other? Can. What they other? Can. What other requests do you have, now sir? Don't talk over me. Don't, don't, don't talk over me. Just like you don't want me to talk over you. Just like you don't want me to talk over you. Just like you don't Mr. want me to Brooks, talk over you. Mr. Brooks, what other requests do you have? I, and I just asked you, I just asked you not to talk over me. You've been making your record the whole time you've been over this. You had me muted. I didn't see no, I didn't see no requests over there. I didn't write nothing to go over there. I let you do what you was doing. No matter how egregious and biased it is, I let you do what you was doing. Because we both know that what you're doing is not right. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to refocus your attention to the jury instructions. Okay. All of your objections are noted. I understand that. If you can't answer my question, I'm going to move on. I'm going to mute him once again. He refuses to answer simple questions regarding the if he has any requests. He just made an argument regarding the bail jumping, so clearly he has an understanding about the law as it relates to that. It may be a mis misunderstanding about the law and double jeopardy, but he made a, an argument. I've denied it. I'd like to know if he has any other requests. If he can stay on topic, I'll unmute and mute. I will unmute him again, and he can tell me the list, just like the state went through a list. I need to get through their list. I'm asking you to list out all your requests, and then I will take each one up in turn. So here is your opportunity to give me your other requests, not debate with me about prior rulings. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Don't, 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 don't sit up here and try to play no game talking about you giving somebody an opportunity that you haven't gave me an opportunity to properly defend myself and put, put evidence, put stuff into evidence, which I've asked you repeatedly to do before we even got to the trial. You told me he wasn't in the evidentiary phase. Mr. Brooks, do you have any other requests as it relates to the jury instructions? This is probably the tenth or so time I've asked you this question. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. So please stop being incorrect, Your Honor. Please, please stop. Please do you stop. have any additional requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Yes. Oh. That, that first uh, count 74 bill jumping needs to be dismissed. You can't charge me with two things. You can't charge me with the same charge twice. All right, I've made a note of that. What's the next either, issue? Either one county going to charge me with it or y'all, but it can't be both. It's the same. It's pursuant to the same exact thing that I was going to bill for. The same exact thing. The same exact case. So why are we giving the jury instructions on two cases from another county? I've made a note of that. What other, what other requests do you have? Man, this is ridiculous. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even able... I'm not even able to adequately defend myself, present evidence, do anything, because everything I say is going to be found a reason for it not to be done. What are we doing here, Your Honor? What, what, what is the Mr. Brooks. Why should I be here when... I've made a note of your request as to count 74. Do you have any other requests as it relates to the jury instructions? Why are we why are we even having jury instructions? Why do I got why do I have to even sit here in this courtroom at this point? Because everything you've been doing, you've been doing without my consent anyway. So you're gonna find a way to do this without my consent. So why do I need to be here for? Your objection for lack of consent is noted for the record. Okay, yeah. Any you, any you, other you requests, talk, sir? You talk a good game. You talk a good game to save yourself a dumb face. But everything I put up and has no merit in your court. All right. I've asked him many, many, many times. I've advised him, and I'll advise him once again. If he fails to answer the question, I'm moving on. Do you have any other requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir? You can't, you can't move on because I haven't given you consent to. All right. He.
did not answer. So I'm muting him again. I, the only request that he has made as it relates to the jury instructions as he pounded his fist once again, raised his voice. Um, I understand, I really do, that he's upset with my decision to cut off his ability to present a defense, but that decision was made based on his conduct and his conduct alone, as I've outlined already on the record. Um, so the only request that he made uh, at, was as it relates to the bail jumping counts. Um, I'm denying those requests, whether it be to dismiss one count or to dismiss both on double jeopardy um, or to just not instruct the jury. Um, however way I interpret it, I'm denying that. All right, let me go through the state's... Your Honor, can I add one more? Sure. I'm sorry. 154 summary of evidence... I believe we had a map, um, actually two maps that summarize the, um, we had three maps, I think the one was summarized his, his route, the path that he took, the other one summarized the victims who were struck in the specific locations, and the other one summarized the positions of the law enforcement officers at the various intersections and throughout the parade route. I'll make a note of that. We also, I don't believe I saw the jury view instruction either. I don't, I mean, that was given to them at the time. I don't know that it needs to be reread, but I think we need to consider that as well. And that was my version of 152. All right, so let me go through uh, the list from the state. Turning to page 61. So I've considered the request by the state. Um, I am going to rely on what information they put in the charging document. I'm going to deny the request to include the specific case numbers. Um, there is evidence, of course, that was received regarding the two separate cases out of Milwaukee County uh, that form the basis for both of the bail jumping counts. It will be up to the jury to review the evidence and make a determination as to the verdict forms, though, that were referenced previously, at least the description of them in the jury instructions, that um, obviously the third count of bail jumping is incorrect. That needs to be battery, and that change will be made. I'm also having Madam Clerk include all of the numbers for the jury instructions when they go back so it's very clear. Some of them did not have them on, just frankly, from prior cases that she and I have worked on. But in this case, I want to be very clear with all of the numbers. Um, so I think I've addressed the first two bullet points. As far as the motive instruction as a standalone, I believe that is appropriate. And I'll instruct Madam Clerk to include that. As far as where it goes, I'm going to just, in, uh, any instructions that we add should just be in the numerical order, unless we, unless there's a other request that's made. Then the state also made a request as it relates to jury instruction 70. which is found on page 65. So as it relates to this, the state is asking that I simply um, instruct the jury based on the pattern instruction and not include the more, that second paragraph. I had previously advised the jury with another paragraph that I was contemplating including, even if I took out that big paragraph that just said, at times, Mr. Brooks has appeared from another courtroom. This must not influence your verdict in any manner. What's the state's position on including that but taking out the paragraph you request to be taken out? That's fine. Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on that? Which is, uh, so jury instruction 70 has to do with the defendant proceeding pro se. The pattern instruction would be basically the first paragraph it's, I need the bailiffs to move the boxes away from his face. I need to be able to see him. He can keep them on the table, but they need to be moved off to the side. And if he does it one more time, then I will instruct the bailiffs to take the boxes away. Those are trial prep materials. 
Um, if there's something in those materials related to jury instructions, he's in, he should take those out now. Otherwise, they need to be moved away from the microphones and away from from blocking his face. I'm not putting them here. I'm not putting them Mr. Brooks, do you have any position on the verbiage of jury instruction no, 70 on page no 65? No are you are you my accuser? Are you my accuser, Your Honor? All right, he's choosing not to answer, so I'll mute him again. It's unfortunate that he's deciding not to participate in this. Um, I agree with the state. I don't need to highlight with that second paragraph. I will take that out, but I will include in the paragraph that reads, at times, comma, Mr. Brooks has appeared from another courtroom, period. This must not influence your verdict in any manner. Inclusion of the instructions that were put on the last couple of pages um, include 325 impeachment of witness, its prior conviction, the part about juvenile adjudication should be struck from the heading, and it should read evidence has, be, has been received that one or more witness in this trial has been convicted of a crime. There were two witnesses that was applicable to. The remainder will be as is. And that was one witness for the state, one witness for the defense. I just will add that if Mr. Brooks has any position about these requests, he should, um, he is currently muted. He can uh, raise his hand and I'll unmute. Otherwise, he can pass a note to the bailiff or simply tell the bailiff who can then tell me and I can unmute him. But unless he tells me that, I'm going to assume he's made a decision not to provide further comment based upon the last statement he made to me. Then 141, um, I am, I believe that's appropriate given the evidence that has been received that's on identification of defendant is in issue. Um, and uh, that I will instruct the jury accordingly unless there's a request from Mr. Brooks to take that out. Is there a request from you, sir, to take 141 out? I'll unmute for that purpose. That's It's found on page 106 because it's at the end of the instructions. This is the instruction on identification of the defendant and where it's at issue in a case. I believe it's appropriate given the testimony in this case. Do you have any position on that, sir? You are unmuted, so you can simply answer yes or no. No response. Then uh, 172, circumstantial evidence, flight, concealment, I believe is appropriate given the evidence that has been received during this case. Yes, sir? Am I you have been. Am I unmuted? You are. So how long before you mute? As soon as I say something? Depends on what you say, how you say it, and if it's responsive to what we're doing. Why do I have to be responsive to what, to what you guys are doing? Nothing, okay. that, nothing I say even matters at this point. So what's the point of me being responsive? You can't make decisions for me. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to mute you unless you can participate in what we're doing, which is discussing the jury instructions. I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm going to tell the jury the truth. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell them what hasn't been told to me. I haven't been able Mr. To Brooks, to as a, I'm going to mute you because we're trying to discuss the jury instructions, not what you're going to say during your closing argument. I will get to that later. In terms of uh, instruction 172, I'll instruct Madam Clerk to take out of the heading the word escape. Should just say flight concealment. Um, and then I've reviewed 154. I believe that's appropriate. I'm going to pull it up just as a draft. I'm not sure if there's anything that needs to be. So 
So the pattern instruction talks about a chart. Is there any request from the state as to just keep that or modify that in any way based upon the evidence that was presented? Because you actually submitted maps and things were received. I don't know that summary... I think that there was a summary of the victims and the associated counts. I believe that that was Exhibit 141. But that was received, wasn't it? And there were some charts of the um, extreme dance team, the formation, and dancing right. grannies. Do you have the, the exhibit list, Madam Clerk? What are those numbers again? I wrote 141. Um, we're just looking for the extreme dance and dancing granny chart. Grannies is 54. 54 would be the dancing grannies. Okay. And 33 is the extreme dance team. So 54, 141, and 33? Yes. Do you think the use of the word chart is correct, or should that be? I would say diagram and maps. Um, the court has allowed the use of diagrams and maps to organize the evidence. The maps were evidence, though. What this instruction says is the court has allowed the use of a chart to organize the evidence and to assist you in understanding it. The chart itself is not evidence. It is a summary of some of the evidence that was permitted or presented. However, it is the evidence that controls. You should rely on the chart only to the extent that you believe it accurately and properly summarizes the evidence. Then we think 154 should not be given. That's what I was wondering. Because so they were all admitted. They were all admitted based upon how they were presented and the I testimony apologize. regarding them. Typically, where that comes in is for use in openings and closings solely that are based upon evidence, and we anticipate those things coming in, not when there's been an actual document that's been admitted. So I don't think 154 is needed, and I'll deny that request. What about uh, 152 regarding the view? Governor, as I read that, that was given prior to the view, and I think that was appropriately given at that time. I don't believe it goes into the closing instru or the um, final instructions. That was my, my inclination, but I wanted to get the party's position on that. I'll once again unmute Mr. Brooks and just ask him if he has any position regarding any of these last issues that we've discussed with as it relates to the jury instructions. Anything from you, sir, on the jury instructions? He's not responding to the question. I believe that covers all of the issues that were raised by the parties then. Um, you are. I'll give you one final opportunity to tell me if you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions, sir. What you mean you give me one final thing? I didn't, I didn't consent to nothing that this all been talked about. And I say y'all because I haven't been participating in none of that. I understand, I sir. Your objection's you noted. Your lack of consent is noted. Okay, I don't see what's going on in here. So how is decisions being made without me being able to consent to it? Sir, you forfeited your right to be present in this courtroom by your conduct, and you have not requested well, actually, to come back. Actually, actually, you took a, a break, so let's, let's make sure the record is correct. You took a 10-minute break. I did. At which, time, at which time I was brought back into this courtroom. I was advised you wanted to stay, sir. Okay, and you, you've been, you been uh, forcing me to come over here from the get-go. Why couldn't you force me to come back over here where I'm supposed to be at? 
Sir, you, my understanding is you requested to stay in the other courtroom. I thought I put that on the record at the beginning. If I did not, I'll put make that part of the record now. I was advised by the bailiffs that you were requesting to stay in that courtroom. I certainly advised you prior to that that if there was a time you wanted to come back in, all you needed to do was ask. You've done that previously. Yeah, and during and even even during this time though you've been incredibly disruptive during I mean at one point you were muted for an extended period of time and you were yelling so loud sir um, we could hear you in this courtroom I couldn't decipher what you were saying and I was also made aware that another branch could hear you so you were you continued okay, your disruptive fine. behavior that's fine because at the end of the day I should be heard I have this first amendment right to be heard so if I'm going to be constantly muted the only way for me to be heard is for me to raise my voice. Mr. Brooks, one final time. Do you have any requests as it relates to the jury instructions? No, Otherwise, I'm going to improve them. I'm going to take a break, and then we'll uh, come back okay. in the afternoon to go over verdict answer, forms. I didn't answer yes or no, so how do you consent to anything without me answering the question? Are you, you going to answer the question, sir? You can't, but you can't force me to do it. You can't. You can't just say, I'm going to do this. Because Sir, but you also this. can't stall the proceedings by failing to answer. I didn't, I didn't try to stall the proceedings. You the one that held me in contempt. I never you held you in contempt. contempt. All right, I'm going to mute him once again because he refuses to answer a very simple question uh, about whether he has any requests as it relates to the jury instructions. I will work on making all the changes with Madam Clerk, finalizing the order, print them off again. Um, she has been working on the verdict forms, which are, of course, separate, which need to be approved by this court. And so those will be printed off. A set will be provided to the state. A set will be provided to Mr. Brooks. We'll take an, uh, I'll do a 90-minute lunch break. So it's roughly, it's 1127. <coughs> so we'll come back at 1 o'clock uh, to finalize the verdicts. And the jury instructions. And Your Honor, with regard to, to sequestration of the jurors and the alternates and those issues, did you want to address those this afternoon? Yes. Okay. We can do that. Thank you. Okay, I, I can put on the record that I had the civilian jury bailiffs provide the parties. We have a letter regarding sequestration. There's an emergency contact form. So all of the jurors were made aware of that. Um, they know that. Um, of course, once the case is, the, all of the instructions are read and the parties make their arguments and then there's some final instructions at the end and the case goes to the jury, um, obviously only 12 of the 15 will be deliberating, uh, but we can make a more full record of that this afternoon. Thank you. All right, we are in recess until 1 o'clock. Um, I'm just instructing the parties to stay until the handout of the verdict and then you can leave for lunch. Thank you.